Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, we've been talking about fluoride and the pineal gland. If you have questions about hypothyroidism, skin health issues you or a loved one may be dealing with, or if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products, please head to our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase all your favorite Longevity products off our websites. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team on pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be part of the Longevity family. You can start a Longevity business. If you're an entrepreneur, if you want to make work out of the home, make as much money or as little money as you like, have your, be your own boss, don't have a boss, and help change the world at the same time. At a fundamental level, the most fundamental level, really, which is the level of our health, that's what we're about at Longevity, the level of our physical health, please call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also, uh, also want to uh, remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we have been talking about the mysterious pineal gland. The pineal gland is saturated with blood. It's not protected the way the rest of the brain is. The rest of the brain is protected from the blood, from stuff that's floating around in the blood by the so-called blood-brain barrier. The fact that the pineal gland is so drenched, so saturated with blood, and that it's not protected makes it more susceptible to blood toxicity, especially fluoride. And remember, we're talking about a little tiny gland here. It's like the size of a grain of rice. That alone is mind-blowing to me. How can something that small be so, so powerful? Think of that. Well, just pick a, picture a grain of rice or go take a look at a grain of rice, and that's how big your pineal gland is. So the fact that it's drenched with blood means that it's going to be very susceptible to fluoride and also to calcium. Fluoride is a calcium magnet. That's why it works on the teeth. Fluoride induces calcification. And just like you get calcification of the tooth, which is supposedly a good thing, you also get calcification of the pineal gland, which is not a good thing, and it affects pretty much everybody. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure why, the fa why this is so, but it turns out almost everybody has some degree of calcification in their pineal gland as they age. Now... Some of it has to do with our poor calcium metabolism. Our entire body kind of calcifies as we get older. It's one of the ways we die is we calcify. We turn to stone, literally. We turn to a rock. The calcification of the pineal gland is especially harmful because the pineal gland regulates everything. And fluoride is a calcifying agent. That alone is enough of a reason why you wouldn't want to put fluoride in the water. Just what it's doing with your pineal gland. Fluoride messes up the pineal gland. 
Why is this important? Because the pineal gland affects every single biological function you can name. Nobody ever talks about this, this relationship between fluoride and pineal dysfunction. The pineal gland is a life management gland. It is a stress management gland. It helps us handle life. It's a fertility gland. It's an immune strengthening gland. It's a sugar management gland. It plays a role in growth, in repair, in eating, in procreation. Every single biochemical activity you can name is affected somehow by the pineal gland, even controlled by the pineal gland. And all this happens because the pineal gland senses light. It's not really the pineal gland that's controlling everything. The pineal gland is the mediator. It's the light that controls everything. We are light beings. We are solar beings. Our body is controlled by the light and by the dark. It's controlled by, by the light-dark cycles. We are tied into the cycles of light and dark. We are tied into the sun, literally. The sun is like our puppet master. We're, the, we're, we're like the puppets, and the sun is the puppet master. Ancient people knew this. Ancient people recognized the power of the sun over the body, and they worshipped the sun. They called it the sun. They thought the sun was God, which is kind of an interesting little play on words there. So the pineal gland affects everything. It functions like an eye. It's literally like a third eye. It's literally an eye in the middle of your brain, smack dab in the middle of your head. We have an eye in the middle of our head. We have an inner eye. And when I'm saying the pineal gland is like an eye, I am not being metaphorical here. I'm being literal. I really mean an eye. It has pineal gland cells. They call them pine pinealocytes. Pinealo pinealocytes. I'm not sure how you say that, actually. Call them pineal gland cells. They're light detectors. They're very similar to the rods and the cones. In your eyes, you have cells called rod cells and cone cells, and these rod cells and cone cells detect light and dark. Well, guess what? You got cells that are very similar to rods and cones in your head, inside, <laughs> that detect shape and color and shading and light. And this light detection property is what allows the pineal gland to sense the rhythms, the light and dark rhythms, the daytime and the nighttime. It's our primary sensor of day-night cycles. We have different chemistry in the day than we do in the night. And this rhythm between day and night, the changes in biochemistry, is called the circadian rhythm. And the circadian rhythm are the day-night cycles which control the biochemistry. All the biochemistry is regulated by the pineal gland. The body is supposed to grow when the days are longer. The chemistry of growth is higher. We have more chemicals of growth when there's more daytime. This is why you want to be on the sun. The sun stimulates growth. You don't want to hide from the sun. You're going to add hiding from the sun to the list of stupid doctor memes like genetics cause cancer and you got to lower your, you got to lower your uh, cholesterol and the diseases are hereditary. You can add that to the garbage heap of nonsense that's spewed out by the, from the medical model. The sun is important for growth. It's important for repair. It's important for health. It's important for healing. And it's all sensed by the pineal gland. That means the pineal gland does all of that. It's responsible for all of that. The pineal gland, via its hormones, regulate puberty. It is especially important for the female reproductive system. Pineal gland hormones, especially melatonin, melatonin and serotonin are the two major pineal gland hormones. They affect, uh, melatonin particularly, affects the release of, uh, of female reproductive hormones and it affects the health of female egg cells. The pineal gland affects the uh, frequency and the duration of uh, menstrual cycles. In pregnant women, melatonin from the pineal gland can actually enter into the fetus where it can have a protective role in the fetus. Melatonin is an amazingly, amazingly fascinating biomolecule in the body. And it's not necessarily one that you want to supplement with. There's a kind of a, a lot of controversy about melatonin supplementation, uh, but it is really powerful stuff, melatonin is. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. back 
on the bright side. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday on the bright side, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. Search engines are up at both on both uh, websites. You can also purchase longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. If you're interested in joining the longevity, uh, joining me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, joining the longevity team, call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Also, please check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com, retinol 5% gel, truth omega-6 healing cream, truth transdermal sea balm, and our Harper's Bazaar top 150 products in the world. Truth Transdermal C Serum, my personal favorite. I use it after I shave. It's amazing after you shave. If you get red spots or you get uh, uh, ir- you're irritated after you shave, legs for women or, or beards for men, it makes a wonderful soothing aftershave. Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth, Trans, uh, Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel are all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking pineal gland, fluoridation, calcification. You never hear about the problems uh, when, when it talks about fluoride in the water. Oh, they'll make your teeth stronger, but you never hear about what they do to the, what fluoride does to the rest of the body, how it increases calcification, how it's, to- how it's just toxic stuff. But it's especially toxic to the pineal gland, which is our major light, light, dark, sensing, uh, light dark sensing gland. It affects fertility. Because of the pineal gland's relationship to fertility and uh, the reproductive system, and because of its susceptibility to fluoridation, it's like fluoride in the water is a population control mechanism. It's like a strategy for population control, a sneaky strategy for population control. Drink distilled water, best bet, or reverse osmosis water. Some people have a problem with distilled water, whatever, just drink clean. I like distilled water personally, but reverse osmosis water is good too. So the pineal gland, this mysterious structure in the middle of our head that's like a third eye, is responsible basically for converting the outside world, which we detect as light, and the time of year, and the time of day, and the season, to biochemistry. So we're responsive to the time of the year. Our biochemistry is responsive to the bi- time of the year via the pineal gland. Light goes to the pineal gland, goes to biochemistry. Adaptive biochemistry, that is we adapt, we're responsive to the time of year. We have different biochemistry in the summer than we do in the winter. We have different biochemistry in the morning than we do at night. We have different biochemistry at 5 p.m. than we do at 5 a.m. We have different biochemistry uh, in January than we do in July. We have different biochemistry in the summer than we do in the fall, than we do in the winter, than we do in the spring. It's all mediated by the pineal gland. In the summertime, the days are longer. Sunlight has red light. Fluorescent light has blue light. More, has, sunlight has more red light, I should say. And red light is energizing. Red light is building. Red light helps the body secrete stress management and life management hormones. I like the term life management more than stress management because stress is you know, part of life. We have this idea that stress is some kind, somehow a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. The body adapts to stress. The body grows from stress. So I'm going to call life management hormones. Cortisol, cholesterol, or I'm sorry, cortisol, testosterone, DHEA, estrogen. All of these come from, uh, are stimulated by the activity of red light from the sun. On the other hand, blue light, which is in fluorescent lighting, that suppresses life management hormones. The more, uh, that's why you don't want to be under fluorescent lighting if you can avoid it, which is almost impossible, right? Fluorescent lights emit more blue light, and blue light has a kind of suppressant effect on these life management hormones. Sunlight, on the other hand, has a stimulating effect on life management hormones. Pineal activity especially involves the immune system. Our ability to resist disease, our ability to reduce, uh, resist infection, excuse me, infections. The shingles virus, for example. Stressors. During the summer, days are longer, temperatures are warmer. That's when we evolve to be active and forage and hunt and have babies. That's uh, when our immune system is the most robust. 
That's when a fertility is the most active, or is the fertility is at, is at its highest in the summertime. The immune system is strongest and more robust in the summertime. On the other hand, where there is uh, less light, where the days are shorter, either in the northern part of the uh, north of north of the equator, or or in the in the winter time, I should say, the body is more prone to low metabolic symptoms, things like seasonal depression (SAD), seasonal depressional disorder. Weight gain is more likely in the winter time. You notice how weight you gain more weight in the winter time than you do in the summertime. PMS, anxiety, food cravings, fatigue, especially colds and flus. These are all more susceptible to all of these things when the light is when there's less light, like in the winter time. That's why people. That's why there's a, a flu season. Flu season's not in the summer. Flu season's in the winter. Why? Because the immune system is weaker in the wintertime. Blame the pineal gland. We don't get the flu as much in the summer. Cycles of light and dark regulate all of these functions. And later, uh, cycles of light and dark and the pineal gland's activity affects the body's most important biochemical building substance of all. The body's, I call it the, biochem the body's biochemical best friend cholesterol. Yes, I said cholesterol. The body's biochemical best friend. I was just reading this morning, by the way, how now scientists believe that HDL might not be a good cholesterol. Last year I read how LDL might not be a bad cholesterol. Pull these studies up. We'll talk about them. Uh, maybe we'll talk about them tomorrow. Um, cholesterol, there's no good or bad cholesterol. Let's get that out of our heads. Cholesterol is a major building substance, period. And like I said earlier, how fluoridation of the water is a population control mechanism, or might be a population control mechanism, conceivably, so is statin drugs. Statin drugs are a way to get us out of the gene pool because cholesterol is critical for growth and, manage, uh, uh, growth and repair and anti-aging. Cholesterol is anti-aging. Low cholesterol, without enough cholesterol, I should say, you can't make stress management, life management hormones, you can't be fertile, and cholesterol is highly regulated by, cholesterol levels are highly regulated by the pineal gland. The pineal gland, number one, turns on, uh, well, it turns on the production of chemicals of life management, fertility, all the good stuff, we'll say. And it all comes from two major factors. Number one, how it interprets time. And number two, its ability to stimulate the secretion of building chemicals. That's the pineal gland. The pineal, that's why the pineal gland is so important, and that's why fluoridation of the water is so problematic. Number one, the pineal in gland interprets the rhythms of time, seasons, and light, and dark, and day, a day and night. And it regulates building chemicals. Cholesterol and insulin. Prime, cholesterol and insulin are two of the most important, we'll say. Cholesterol is ridiculously important, unbelievably important. Pineal gland, the, pineal, the health of the pineal gland is important for helping the body turn cholesterol into stress hormones. It helps us utilize cholesterol. If you take the pineal gland out of rats, you'll end up with elevated cholesterol levels because they can't use the cholesterol. They can't turn that cholesterol into their stress management, their life management hormones. All right, there's so much here to talk about. We'll do that. Uh, we'll finish up tomorrow. We'll continue tomorrow talking pineal gland and fluoride and cholesterol and cortisol. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll return right after this. Yeah. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have a comment or success story or questions about anything we're speaking about here today or a health challenge that you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open, and we'll get to you your calls here momentarily, so hang tight. <clears throat> Excuse me. From the uh, Center for Disease Control, this is research from the University of Missouri School of Medicine, flavonoids found in blueberries and other berries can actually boost cervical cancer therapy. That is, if you're on chemotherapy, using flavonoids from fruits and vegetables can help boost the effects of the drugs you're taking for cervical cancer. This is one of the hidden benefits of nutritional supplements that I, we always get, I always get asked this question, are these, drug, are these nutrients gonna interfere with my medicines? Or doctors will say, don't take those nutrients, they'll interfere with your medicines. No, they won't. Nutrients will make your medicines work better.
better. I guess that's kind of an interference, but what it is is a good interference because it means you'll have to take less drugs. Not only that, but when you're on drugs, you're depleting your body of precious nutrients. This is something you never hear your doctor or a pharmacist talk about. Nutrients, uh, drugs cause nutritional depletion. Let me say that again. That's so important. Pharmaceuticals, the drugs we take to supposedly make us better, which they don't, deplete our body of nutrients. Tell that to your doctor. If he tells you the nutrients are going to interfere with the meds. No. Number one, the nutrients will make the meds work better. And number two, then you need the nutrients because you're going to become depleted by taking the poison slash medicine. All right. One more, and then we'll get your calls. 844-236-6010. This is from the Journal of Cutaneous Medical Surgery. Risks and benefits of cannabis, also known as marijuana, in dermatology. Cannabis has been used for recreational purposes for millennia. Also actually used for uh, medicinal purposes. But it turns out cannabis might have use for folks who have acne, dermatitis, rashes, pruritus, wound healing. It might have benefits even for skin cancer. Nobody really knows, but uh, it's very possible. All the cells of your body are responsive to cannabis. That is specifically the cannabinoids in cannabis. Cannabis is just a plant. Never mind the stupidity and the meanness and the, um, the pig-headedness of a government telling the people that they can't grow plants. They can't eat their lettuce. You know, laws against cannabis are like having laws against lettuce. That'd be like some country where they said lettuce is illegal, and if you grew lettuce, you could go to jail for 20 years if you sold lettuce. That's how stupid it is. Yes, you can get high from cannabis, obviously, but you can also get healed from it based on numerous, numerous studies, particularly CBD, which is just amazingly important. But I was just reading how the FDA or the DEA, I should say, has now decided that CBD is going to be a Schedule One drug. That is no known medical use, despite the voluminous evidence that it's got tremendous value, medicinal value, therapeutic value for epilepsy, for uh, anxiety, for pain, for cancer. Voluminous evidence, huge amounts of evidence. And if it's not a no known medical use, why is the government researching at their government research centers in Mississippi how cannabis works? Uh, for medicinal for medicinal properties. Why are drug companies spending so much money on ca uh, cannabinoids, cannabinoid research? Anyway, all the cells of your body are responsive to cannabinoids, all of them, including your skin cells. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Ron in Minneapolis. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. How are you, Ben? Doing good. How about you? Good, good. Yeah. I called last week and remember I had that issue with the um, sudsy urine, and you said maybe it's the kidney thing. I was wondering any way. Remind me, was it foamy urine? Were we talking foamy urine? Yeah, foamy in the urine. So I've okay. noticed when I get up in the morning, you know, I haven't had any protein since before I went to bed, maybe an hour, and my urine isn't sudsy. So then after I have protein, then it is. Yeah, you that's protein. you Foam means protein, but there's two reasons why protein will show up in your urine, two main reasons, and that is your okay. kidneys are, are not filtering, so you've you got a kidney issue, or it could also be that you're just doing too much protein. Now, you, unless you're, it's unlikely that you're doing too much protein unless you're like doing you know, huge scoops of it out, of, a pro, out of, pro, of protein powder. I suppose that could happen. Most people aren't going to do that much protein. That foam will come out in the urine if they're healthy. So I'd be guessing kidney issues. Do you have anything else going on? No, how would I find out if it was kidney issues? How would I? Well, would I for you, that's, I'm, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you right now. This is how you find out if it's going on. You look for other symptoms in the body. That's a great question, by the way. You know, if you go to the doctor, they're going to run tests on you, and then they'll determine how healthy you are, how, how healthy your kidneys are based on your test scores. Problem with that logic is, is they have to have references to see, you know, good, to see if your, your numbers are good or bad. They have to have standard references. And then they determine, they determine where you fall into that range of standard references. I don't like standard references because there's no standard people. You know what I'm saying? They try to do these statistical algorithms and, you know, to try to figure out what the, what the average is. 
but there's nobody who's average. So I'm not a big believer in tests. What I, what I prefer doing is looking for other symptoms. Most important kidney symptoms are going to involve your blood sugar, also heart problems, or not heart, but cardiovascular, like blood pressure issues maybe. Uh, not necessarily heart problems, but it could also involve the circulate, circulatory system. Kidneys regulate the circulatory system. So uh, you may have issues like uh, when you stand up, you, your blood pressure doesn't adjust and you feel dizzy or woozy. That could be a sign. Nope. Okay. Uh, you, okay, not not going on there. Do you yep. are, are weight gain issues? Nope, Do you have weight, not that. No weight gain issues? Uh, nope. um, let's see what else I could think of here. Blood sugar issues. Do you have any blood sugar issues? Do you feel tired after you eat? Do you feel tired after you eat uh, sugar, or do you crave sugar? Do you go through high blood sugar, low blood sugar, roller coaster kinds of things? No, but I do feel it when I have high glycemic foods, like for instance, like corn. That's okay. A one. Okay. Well, that that could that's not necessarily an issue. That's it could be. It tends towards something. But basically, that's what you want to be looking for is other symptoms. You have to collect the dots and then you connect the dots. But you got to collect them before you connect them. You got to have a bunch of data points. It's like sampling, you know, the more data points you have, the more accurate your picture is going to be. If you have one, if you have a canvas and I put a dot in the center of the canvas, you can't tell what it is. But if I put more dots, eventually a picture is going to start to emerge. And that's what you want is a picture to emerge from the body. This is what a doctor should be doing. This is a doctor's role is to put the dots together and to create a picture of what's happening in the body. The thing is, we don't need doctors to do it. We can do it ourselves. The more points you have, the clearer the picture will be. You gave me one point, foam in the urine. That's definitely a point because that shouldn't happen. But now we got to get some more points because one point is just a dot in the middle of our canvas. I can't tell if it's a mountain or a river or a tree or anything else. I need more points. You, are you making sense here? So that, yeah, I don't have any really sugar things, like I say. Well, I, um, that, that, what you don't have is not a point. Yeah. <laughs> what you don't have it doesn't count. I don't need to know what you don't have. You need to know what you do have. You understand? Okay. You understand here? You got to find points. You got to be attuned to your body. Hang on, uh, Ron. We'll finish up when we come back. Okay, we got to take a break. And if you're on hold, hang tight as well. We'll finish up. Uh, we'll get your calls as well. When we finish up with Ron. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Ron in Minneapolis. Got lines open, by the way, 844-236-6010. Ron, let's get Ron up here. Ron? Yo, Ron. Do we have Ron? Ron. Yep. Oh, Hello. there you are. Hey, Ron. So uh, the kidney, kidney mouth uh, protein in the urine usually indicates something going on with the kidneys, although it can be just excess protein that you're ingesting. Uh, but you, that's unlikely, unless you're going crazy with your protein. Um, more, li more than likely, it's, more of, it's a kidney issue. Uh, it, you, the best way to handle this, in my opinion, is to look for other things going wrong in the body. Now, another thing you could do is just, just work generically on, on your health, number one, and that's the triangle of disease. And that's always a good thing. Look for food problems. Eliminate problem foods, eat less foods, use microbiome supporting strategies like probiotics and fiber. And this is not just for Ron, by the way. This is just a general way to get healthy. Whether you're symptomatic or not, if you're symptomatic and you can't figure out where it's coming from, this is a, just a good strategy. Number one, you focus on digestive health. I know I say it every day. I'll just say it again. Focus on digestive health, eliminate problem foods, use, the, use fiber, veggie juices, probiotics, fermented foods, eat less food, intermittent fasting, use connective tissue building supplements to build and, and strengthen the intestinal lining, things like glucosamine and high alluronic acid, your glucogel caps and ultimate EFAs and zinc, work on digestive health in terms of the stomach. Make sure you're getting enough your ultimate enzymes with meals, apple cider vinegar, everything you think of for the digestive system. Then stabilize the blood sugar system, major relationship between the kidneys and the blood sugar system, using your sweeties, your ultimate niacin, your ultimate selenium, making sure you're not eating as much sugar. That's a big one, man. Eating sugar is the big one, and I am not saying this like I'm better than anybody because I'm addicted to it too. Sh sugar addiction is built into us, folks. 
and it's because of our reward chemistry. Everything we do is controlled by reward chemistry. Our body looks for rewards, and manufacturers of products know this, and they know it will hit our reward chemistry. We'll do anything for a reward, biochemically speaking, and reward chemistry is activated big time by sugar, and manufacturers know this. We'll get a reward. We'll feel like yippee. When I say reward, it's like yippee for the brain. Sugar makes your brain go yippee, and it's hardwired. It's built in, and you've got to be a Zen monk to be able to resist it, or you can tap into or hack into it, I should say, using glutamine supplements, using more protein, using BCAAs. Now, in your case, Ron, you've got to be a little bit more careful with the protein, of course, but still, more protein as opposed to carbs and as opposed to carbohydrates and more fat, ideally more fat. Fat is very filling and very satisfying. And then also getting reward, <clears throat> excuse me, finding another place to get reward chemistry activation that's not food-based. You know, you can get reward by opening the door. You can get reward by cleaning the garage. You can get reward chemistry by finishing a project. There's lots of ways to hack into reward chemistry. So, you know, you got to figure out, we got to figure out the whole blood sugar reward insulin sweet thing, and that's extremely important. And then supplements, of course, can also help the body process sugar, particularly chromium, vanadium, and niacin, all of which are in the longevity products of sweeties and the ultimate niacin. And then last, but most certainly not least, is the adrenal thyroid complex. Calm the body down as best as you can. Meditation's great. A nap is great. Sleep is great. Muscle relaxation, relaxation is great. Deep breathing is great. Hot tubs and hot water. There's so many ways to calm the body down. The adrenal thyroid complex is the third point in the triangle of disease, which means after that, everything follows. The body, all breakdown follows. Now, I'm not, that wasn't specifically for the protein in your urine or for the foam in, in your urine, Ron, but if you have foam in your urine, that means the body is breaking down on some level and everything I just talked about will help, will reverse that trend. will take you from re, uh, degeneration into regeneration. All right? Okay, and that will help the kidneys too, right, you think? Yes, yes, absolutely. Abs absolutely will help the kidneys. Don't forget that, and don't forget your supplements. I mean, your general right. basic supplements like the Healthy Start Pack. All right, I'm going to let you go, bud. Th thank you. Thank you, Ron. Have a great day yourself. All right, John in Oklahoma. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. Hi, hey, buddy. Oh, is this Underwear Man? Underwear Guy? It is. Now you're in it Oklahoma. You know, I love it. You're just all over the place. We're in Oklahoma. Five, five degrees yesterday morning. Is that right? Oh, my goodness. Five. Yeah, we had a cold here. The whole country, I think, is that cold. That's okay, all right. So it'll be, have, it'll be warm question. soon enough. Yes, go ahead, John. Uh, and it just happens to follow up on the kidneys. So yes. over the past few years, when I get up in the morning, that's when I notice it the most, um, I will have a, a pain in the small of my back. I used to think that maybe it was muscular or maybe it was a joint pain or something, and it'll go away after a couple hours. I won't feel it again. Okay. But it's... Um, at one point in time, years ago, I got up. I couldn't even stand up. I just had to lay back down. I was there for about 24 hours. Finally, I got up, found some cranberry juice and just water, and I just flushed my kidneys out or I flushed my body out. And okay. the pain eventually went away. Huh. Um, so it comes and goes with me. Right now, I'm on a uh, moderate protein, high fat diet. Um, I'm working out a lot. I am doing exactly. All of your protocol, I mean, from the get-go, probiotics, fiber, uh, everything, except that I'm, I'm adding in a lot of weights and I'm trying to build uh, muscle. Uh, the other day, I was looking into something on YouTube about kidneys, and I ran across baking soda mm. and kidneys. Okay. What Do you know anything about that? No, um, but baking, just, baking, baking soda alkalinizes things, and it'll alkalinize, it'll alkalinize the kidneys if you're... If they're acid, the kidneys is clearing out acid wastes. So, okay. so alkalinization might might have a health benefit. I haven't heard of that, but just just go, thinking from a biochemical standpoint, it may have an alkalinizing effect on on the tox on toxic buildup. Maybe help uh, uh, raise the pH if the kidneys are acidic, and that can happen. I I imagine that can that can definitely be a problem. What did they say on YouTube? Uh, just about, you know, say a teaspoon, half a teaspoon a but day. But did they say why? That why it did anything? Uh, it, it had something to do with neutralizing some yeah. of the acid. Yeah, um, that's, that, that would be form. my thinking. 
That would be my and, thinking. The kidney, the kidney is processing acid, so it can be, you know, the tissue itself can become acidic if you're, if you're, um, if you're toxic. Sugar is, is is the real bad guy in the in kidney in kidney toxicity. So, uh, so I don't know necessarily that, that that would help directly, but it may help reduce or raise the pH for some from some of the uh, the acid wastes that the kidney has to deal with. That's something to think about. So, I, but I'm kind of curious about this thing in the morning. Uh, th- where the kidneys are? Are you are you positive that it's the kidneys and not the back? No, okay. not at all. Because it would not make more all. sense I, it, that it would be the back. It would make more sense to me that it would be the back. I, I don't know necessarily why, uh, you know, why the kidney will. Uh, unless you're accumulating acids while you sleep, I suppose that might have an effect on it. Try doing some uh, something alkalinized, some baking soda or something first thing in the morning. See if that helps the next time you have the kidney pain, or if it's and the I'm back, and that's. Uh, it's much more common for it to be the back. You know, something very interesting about the connective tissue, and that when we talk about the back, we're really talking about the connective tissue. Uh, something that's very interesting is the body will dump toxicity into the connective tissue, especially at night. So it, when you're sleeping, that's a golden opportunity for the body to get rid of its toxic, or for the blood to get rid of its toxicity, and it will tend to get rid of it in the connective tissue. And this is a very, very underappreciated point about bio, biology, is that the connective tissue is the great dumping ground of blood toxicity. So that if you're eating the wrong foods or you're eating at night before you go to bed and your body's working, uh, working through the night to try to clear the blood uh, or there's a lot of toxicity in the blood, you will wake up not only with pain, connective tissue pain, but you'll also wake up groggy or not groggy, but you won't be able to move as well. Well, you'll also wake up groggy too. That can happen too. But in terms of the connective tissue's role as a dumping ground, that can be uh, first thing in the morning is when you, sometimes you'll notice it most first thing in the morning because a lot of that dumping happens at night. And that's one of the reasons why we need coffee first thing in the morning to get going is because our body's kind of sluggish from all the toxins that have been dumped in throughout the night. So I would be thinking more that it had something to do with the back, uh, with the more with the muscles or the connective tissue than it would with the kidneys. But try a little baking soda, see what happens first thing in the morning if that makes a difference. All right, that, John. That's actually that's actually what I'm doing. I'm just trying a little bit of everything and then yeah, I'll let's make see what happens. Let me know. Let me know okay, what happens. Thank you. All right, buddy. Appreciate Good to it. talk to you, John. Happy New Year. Uh huh. All right, that was our friend underwear guy. And that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about the pineal gland. The pineal gland, by the way, and we'll talk about this tomorrow, the pineal gland evolved, according to a new theory anyway, to improve vision. Not only is the pineal gland an organ of vision in the center of your head, but it actually may have a role in keeping toxic compounds away from the eye, and that's according to the uh, National Institute of Health. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks so much for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for information about the longevity products as well as news stories and blog posts. And please go to truthtreatments.com for all my truth skin health products, truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.